Hello, how are you? I wanted to talk about talk radio and the story that sort of came about today that YouTube had, uh, everyone's saying deleted their channel. They won't have deleted their channel. It will just be suspended uh, and unavailable to the, the public. Um, so why did YouTube take down talk radio's YouTube channel? Talk radio stream live to YouTube. They are a UK radio station. Uh, there's very much blurred lines between what's a radio station and what's a TV show really now. Uh, talk radio kind of are a sort of right of centre, I would say. Uh, maybe libertarian radio station, uh, predominantly, I would say. Unlike uh, LBC, which is kind of um, a mix, more of a mix. LBC is uh, used to be London Broadcasting Company, I think. And then they've re cleverly rebranded themselves. Um, what, this, what they say now... Uh, listening biggest conversation or something i can't remember what their their slogan is anyways listen about lbc's uh, talk radio so talk radio uh, um decided that they would now I, it's very interesting because presenters on these radio shows seem to be the bosses they decide the editorial what's on the show what isn't on the show it's their show they're in charge uh which is um interesting because that's not what you would do in a television program the producer's in charge, unless the presenter's like so big and the broadcaster is kind of desperate to have them on and they're paid huge amounts of money that, you know, if a presenter knows that the, the radio station is never going to sack them, then they pretty much can just say and do as they like. And, you know, good luck the producer who thinks they can talk over uh, somebody as powerful as that. Um because, you know, the commissioner's going to want to know why have I lost my A-list celebrity from my, my TV station? Now, well, the producer, who's on 27 grand a year, decided that what they were saying was incorrect and fired them. Right, okay, fire the producer and get get the presenter back. That's what, what would happen. And that's not what should happen. So uh, producers, I think, should be in charge of editorial. And if there's a producer in a radio show, uh, the presenter should pretty much be listening to what they say. Uh, there should always be somebody with the sole task of being across editorial, uh, producer guidelines, production guidelines, and what you can and can't do. Am I keeping this show balanced? Um, and that's what they should be doing. But I hear more and more f listening to these uh, radio people that they are the ones in charge and it's their show, not, not anyone else's show. It's their show. And they pretty much decide who gets on there, who doesn't get on there and, uh, who gets cut off and who doesn't get cut off. And um, yeah, I think probably quite an unpleasant world to be in. But uh, the station, um, I think, uh, broke a certain code. I've got a clip here, which I edited and full disclosure, the full interview, uh, That this is a clip, I think, why uh, the, the YouTube channel got taken down. They got to remember that with YouTube, um, you are, you agree to terms of service and if you break those terms of service, you've gone back on your agreement and therefore YouTube are probably within their rights to do whatever they want to do to your channel, uh, depending if you've already agreed to accept that's what they'll do, which is what terms of service are. So, um, uh, I think it's quite right what happened. I think that, uh, they did break a code. Um, Mike Graham, who is the morning, uh, talk show guys, but for shock jock, I guess, very opinionated uh, ex-journalist, I think, a um, bit old school, o often gets as guests on the show sort of very bloated sounding old school journalists, blah, 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 all that kind of crowd. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I quite enjoy it, to be fair. I like it because I don't get like particularly triggered. It doesn't phase me having somebody saying something that I sort of completely disagree with. I'm very center field. I wouldn't say I'm sitting on the fence, but I'm certainly leaning against it, enjoying the view. Um, the so these these guys uh, fail a lot to have balance on their shows. They're not interested in that. They want to be the polar opposite to whatever the other station's doing, uh, and quite often that's what happens. And that's what's happened with LBC, by the way. They're kind of like the other way. They much. They seem to be much more responsible. It's quite interesting seeing how both stations are are working. Uh, but talk radio. Uh, yesterday, not yesterday, Monday the 4th, uh, around about 11.40 a.m. on Monday the 4th of January 2021, had Mike Graham on there and he brought on a guest and uh, I'll share with you now 
the clip of what actually happened. So here's my tweet. Uh, and I've clipped this together. And just a word on that. Because I've clipped it together, lots of people could argue, well, you've lost the context to what the doctor was saying. Uh, I have to a certain extent, but what he was saying, and this is producer Cap now, what he was saying was support material for his main point. So I've included his main point, and, and you can flower it and pepper it and garnish it with all the little things you want. The station broadcast his main point, which you're going to hear in a minute. But let's listen to it. Make sure my fader's up. Mid morning with Mike Graham, Talk Radio. Now, let us welcome Dr. Lawrence Gurlis into the first show of the year. Very happy new year to you, Lawrence, and uh, welcome yeah. back. Well, yeah, happy new year to you, Mike. I have to say, everything has changed since I last saw you. Yes, everything. I'm sure that's true. This is why we wanted to talk to you, because yeah. we always get from you, Lawrence, a kind of a, an idea of what's going on uh, on Main Street, as it were. So, so tell yeah. us what you're seeing. This virus is so contagious. Unless you're going to lock down with troops on the street holding guns... As soon as you lift that lockdown, the virus is going to spread. We are now seeing cases every day, people walking into our clinic, asymptomatic, but they have the virus. And this, this new thing is so contagious that I think we should rethink everything because the reality is we should just let this spread. I'm pausing it there. So this is the line that's just been broadcast on air to I don't know how many thousands of viewers and then on YouTube. It's going to be retweeted. Uh, the doctor, Dr. Lawrence Gerlis, has just said the reality is we should just let this spread. Now, the government the night before had just uh, put the whole country into this is getting super serious now. You all have to stay indoors. I'm, I'm avoiding using certain words, words just because it, it triggers the algorithm and I don't really want that to happen. Uh, but this is what's happened. So um, he's totally contradicting what the government has said. That is allowed. He can do that. That's absolutely fine. No problem with that whatsoever. Good on him. Contradict away. Off you go. Fill your boots. Um, he is, and this is what always gets me on this station, is there's not enough fighting going on. There's not enough good scrapping between callers and presenters. It's, it's, it's a, it seems to be just a, a, a sea of agreement. Just getting people on air who agree with what the presenter thinks. It's kind of weird that way. The balance is off massively. Uh, and if you do disagree, you're just you're just abused. You're insulted. Um, I don't know if that's a fair comment, actually. I'm, I'll take that back. I'm, I don't know if that is true. Let's play on with the clip. And then no one's going to need a vaccine in a month's time, quite frankly. Right. Good to talk to you, Dr. Lawrence Gurley. Thank you very much indeed. GP at Same Day Doctor. Massive, massive injection there of common sense. You don't hear this anywhere. So there's a, I'm just pausing again. Massive, massive injection of common sense. That's what the presenters just said. What you've just heard is common sense. Viewers are listening. Sorry, listeners are listening to this. Where else? He's a GP, right? He is a bona fide doctor. Now you're getting the certificates on the wall. Proper doctor. Stamp of approval. Approved, approved, approved. He's absolutely bona fide. <laughs> Legit. Listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. That's what you've been told now. He said that the case of COVID fighting it is lost. We've already lost it. The new COVID uh, variant is so... He's now repeating what the doctor said. This is all... It, um, it, it's it's Quoting somebody is, is usually okay, but he keeps going off away from quoting him. Um, spreadable, that you can't stop it spreading. So in that case, surely it's time for the government to rethink the strategy that they have. Surely it's time to absolutely listen to people like Dr. Lawrence Gurlis and stop. See that that that's so he's he's now saying it's time to absolutely listen to people like Dr. Lawrence Gurlis. Now that's an interesting one because the word surely there does change it, and I haven't included it in when I quoted him. Uh, but is it a question if you put surely on the front? Surely it's time to absolutely listen to people like Dr. Gurlis. Does that make it a question? It's still kind of. Um, it's definitely still one thing is is definite. The presenter is absolutely uh, advocating that we listen to this doctor. Now, I don't think there can be any doubt about that, and I think that's the problem that they've got. Uh, but the fact is that they have broadcast uh, a doctor saying the reality is we should just let this virus spread, uh, and then we've had the presenter saying massive, massive injection of common sense to, that that the doctor said that, 
And then we've had him say it's absolutely time to listen to people like the doctor who's just said the reality is we should let this spread. This this is a bro now. There's where's the other doctor to say no? Gurness is talking nonsense. That's not, absolutely not what people should do. Uh, where's the balance? There isn't any. Even if they did have the balance, YouTube would probably have ended this because it's it's kind of contravening their rules. Uh, if you don't know what their rules are, uh, YouTube are. Uh, quite clear and let's just bear in mind that when um let me move this so you can see it when um we sign up basically when 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 these um information policies were created youtube would you'd have had to have agreed to them uh you'd have got a notification you wouldn't have been, been able to proceed on your um youtube activities unless you'd agreed to these policies do you read them do i read them does anybody read them no of course we don't because it's a it's a web page of a wall of text and we're not really very interested in it. But we, we do agree to it. And it's our responsibility or somebody's responsibility, it's certainly if you're a serious broadcaster like talk radio, to pay attention to stuff like this and make sure that your presenter doesn't make the mistake that contravenes that that makes you get taken off the air. It's really dead simple. You can disagree with it all you want. So you're blue in the face and you're screaming and you're yelling. and you do. doesn't matter. It's down there. It's black and white. You've clicked something. You've agreed to it. And now you've broken that agreement. And now that entitles them to do what they, what you agree, you'd, you said you would accept they could do if you broke the agreement. You accepted it. Ah, so that's that's how YouTube works. Now YouTube isn't a, a publisher, so they do stuff like this. They do terms of service and they do um, uh, these um, information policies and these service policies, YouTube policies. Um, because they aren't monitored by a regulator like Ofcom. But Talk Radio is a broadcaster as well as a YouTube user. So over on Ofcom, oh, by the way, the, the rule that was broken, if you're interested here, uh, I think there's quite a few. <laughs> um, the main one is here. Claims about uh, the, the beer bug vaccinations that contradict experts' consensus, or maybe not that. Basically, if, if you contravene what the local health authorities or WHO are recommending you do, um, go and read it. You'll find it. If, if you're saying something that contravenes what they say you should be doing, that their, their advice, uh, then you are causing problems and YouTube are going to want to talk to you about it. Uh, and I think it's three strikes and you're out. Now, sometimes it doesn't take necessarily somebody to, to actually log a complaint uh, they can just be auto detected because every time you upload a video, everything, all the audio that's in the video, all the words that you are that said are being worked out and created. And they, they actually do it so they can create subtitles, but they also use that algorithm for creating the subtitles. Auto creates the subtitles. You know, it's voice recognition system built into every video that gets uploaded to YouTube. They also check those words that are in that subtitle file, and they'll go, "Oh, well, this video is talking about the." Beer bug. So um, let's stamp a little warning on there and demonetize it. You know, what can you do? It's uh, it's understandable. Um, but as I say, uh, Talk Radio is a broadcaster, a professional broadcaster. So what do Ofcom say about it? Well, they have all sorts of codes. Of I won't go into it, but Ofcom um, will take complaints from the public uh, they have a complaints procedure somewhere here, um, and they will, if you complain, look into it. They'll they, they'll try. If it's the BBC, they'll get you to complain to the BBC first, but you can ignore that and just go straight to them if you want. The BBC don't tend to uh, pay much attention to your complaints these days. Um, but the uh, Ofcom will definitely. Um, I think Ofcom will step in, by the way, and maybe issue a fine for what uh, they've done on talk radio. I'd be very surprised if they didn't, although Ofcom have been a little bit, I think, off uh, of late, so maybe they won't, but uh, they can. They can issue fines and they can take away your license. That's their power. But that's all the power they've got, really. Um, they're, not, they're not going to, as many people have been saying on Twitter, they don't have the capability to just pull the plug on your broadcast. You can't say, stop broadcasting, pull the plug, switch off, power down. They don't do that. YouTube can do that, but Ofcom can't do that. They don't have that sort of power. 
fines and licenses is is what they can sort of deal with i believe i'm not an expert on ofcom necessarily and things change and i do not spend my days sitting reading ofcom uh, websites um so that's the situation did i finish playing the clip stop trying to stop the unstoppable this is talk radio oh there you go yeah i did so that's the situation uh, now everyone's gone on to uh twitter and have um said oh this is a massive um issue around censorship they are uh, blocking uh giving uh, taking away people's freedom of speech and uh, it's really terrible and this is something that the big tech companies are doing and it's and it's kind of been seen as like a conspiracy amongst all the big tech organizations it feels like it's been treated like that and i don't think it is i just don't think it is i think that uh, there's just certain rules that you can and can't do and you if you break them you you'll find out about it stop breaking the rules simple as that uh, have balance and it's quite often you find that there are people there's a whole group of people who are like in, in the talk radio uh bubble if you like it's like the lawrence foxes and the darren grimes and the um uh, a lot of the brexit people are very talk radio um uh you know and that's you know, fine i mean i enjoy talk radio i i i like a good car crash uh, you know i enjoy watching piers morgan but you know a lot of these people's successes are down to the fact that you know when there's a car crash literally a car crash and all the traffic gets backed up and that's because people are looking out the window trying to get a good view of what's who's crashed what's happened and they're rubbernecking. They call it rubbernecking, don't they? And I think that's what happens quite a lot. And that's why people like Piers Morgan does very well with the viewing figures. Because people are like, going, huh? What, is he, what, what on earth are you going to do next? Um, you know, if people aren't enjoying it, if people are enjoying it, it doesn't really matter. A viewer is a viewer. It's eyes looking at advertising. So that's all that really matters. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, how, how do you feel? about what's happening do you think it is a big uh all you know, the tech companies are coming together just to shut people up uh, i don't think it's the case um necessarily i think that there is definitely a, a political bias one way or the other with these organizations but i think that in the next 10 years or so that will get leveled out i think you'll find it, as the bbc have just done that um people who work for companies will not be able to tweet uh and you'll be contractually obliged not to tweet uh, about you know your political views um putting in your biog that these views are my own and they're they do not represent the company i work for is a nonsense it doesn't mean anything the views do represent the company you work for if you work for a company so uh i don't know why people think that that is a fair and reasonable thing to say um and I think we all have to start taking a bit more responsibility for what we say and do on the internet. And I think that will be forced upon us as regulation starts coming down on these big companies. When As soon as Twitter is told that it is responsible for things that you are saying, uh, they are going to stop you saying things, uh, especially if it's defaming people. You know, if, if you say something illegal or defaming about somebody, or if you get sued because of something you've said, you're sued, not Twitter. Uh, but if you said it on on um, talk radio, if I went on talk radio and said something that was um, wrong or was liable or illegal, if I said something that was illegal on talk radio, uh, I might get something back about that. I might get, some, but also the broadcaster would because they platformed me, um, and they'd have to demonstrate that they had balance. It would it, be it, it, they are kind of responsible for that. Anyway, what do you think? Let me know. I'm exhausting myself talking about that. I hope you found it interesting. I love talking about things like this. Anything to do with television, film, or the media industry and things that are happening on YouTube, on the internet, uh, on Twitter. I find it all fascinating. TikTok, huge fan. Um, write something down below. Let me know. And uh, I'd be interested, genuinely interested to hear what you think. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you again soon. Bye.